We go to an office in Seoul to meet today's guest. The staff seems busy with their work. What exactly do they do here? Hello and welcome to The Interview. I'm your host, Jennifer Clyde. There is an international medical humanitarian organization that provides emergency medical assistance around the globe under the slogan, the world is our emergency room. It is Médecins Sans Frontier, Doctors Without Borders, or MSF for short. I am here today at MSF Korea office to meet Thierry Copens, who was recently appointed General Director. Stay tuned and don't go anywhere. Violence, war, epidemics, hunger, denial of health care, population displacements, natural disasters. Wherever human lives are threatened, there are always people that are first to arrive on the scene. They are the MSF. MSF, or Doctors Without Borders, is a medical humanitarian organization helping those in need of medical assistance, regardless of race, gender, religion, or political orientation. Life is more important than national borders. That is the philosophy MSF stands for. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Jennifer Clyde of The Interview. Nice to meet you, Tianka Benz, and welcome in our office. Oh. I'm very pleased to host you today. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate you. Uh, I understand that you were appointed, recently appointed the uh, General Director of MSF Korea. Um, this was not very long ago. No. <laughs> <laughs> so how is it? How is it to become uh, the General Director of MSF Korea? And how has living in Korea been so far? So far, so good. I'm mm. very pleased to be here in, in Seoul. It's very uh, an interesting city, also uh -huh. a nice city to live, I must say, especially if I compare with my previous experience in the field. And it's, of course, a lot of responsibility mm -hmm. to uh, support the office and to help this office to grow up. Yes. And, of course, to anchor MSF, Doctor Without Borders, mm -hmm. in the Korean society. That yes. would be the main challenge. Uh -huh. <laughs> he gives us a tour of the office and shows us a wall full of photographs. As records of MSF's activities, what were the stories behind these photos? Um, I see over here there are more pictures. Could you perhaps tell us about um, these yeah, pictures? No, no, I think that the first picture uh, was taken in, in the Middle East. Uh, as you know, uh, today uh, the population in the Middle East, in Syria, Iraq, faced mm -hmm. a major uh, crisis. It's a major war zone. Yeah. So this picture illustrates uh, the issue of the refugees in the surrounding uh, countries. Um, vaccination is also a main uh, activities of MSF. Here mm -hmm. you have uh, some pictures. Uh, uh, showing uh, measles outbreaks and how we respond to a measles outbreaks in, in Central uh, Africa. And here we have this little baby. Before going for a malnutrition center, we measure also if he needs to be uh, moved to a therapeutic feeding center. Ah, so, and then we have, uh, because it's MSF Korea, one of our Korean doctors uh -huh. taking care of one one patient. Uh, today we have, uh, in 2015, we had uh, 21 uh, Korean international staff uh, oh, sent to the field. So uh, mm -hmm. we are very proud of them. So that's why we have these pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, of our Korean so, as you said, uh, Korean doctors, doctors are sent to uh, different fields. Uh, could you maybe tell us about the locations or settings and uh, or which fields they are actually sent to? No. So today we have approximately in the world 365 projects mm -hmm. uh, divided in uh, 63 uh, countries. Uh -huh. So uh, ah, I would say, say yes, mainly it's it's Africa. Mm -hmm. It's uh, one of the main places where we have uh, our projects. Mm -hmm. uh, you have pictures of some of our international staff uh, being spread all over the world. So it's mainly Africa, of course, Central Asia and Southeast Asia. And we have a few programs in, so in South, uh, South America. 60% mm -hmm. of our programs are uh, related to emergency and 40% uh, are regular uh, programs. 
project. Mm -hmm. And uh, this represents, of course, the, 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 the number of uh, expatriates, uh, international staff coming from, from Korea. Mm -hmm. But today I would like to highlight that we have uh, 36,000 people working for us, so the map should be full <laughs> of, of pictures. And 90% uh, of our staff are uh, locally hired and, and then 10% uh, are uh, international staff. Oh, I see. Oh. There are more than 30,000 MSF members working in some 60 countries. They're willing to risk their own lives to help others by going to the areas of epidemics and even out to the middle of the sea because they believe every one life saved is worth the effort. They lend a helping hand to medically vulnerable populations throughout the world. Wherever there are life-threatening situations, MSF workers make every effort to save people's lives, even at this very moment. MSF values every life. And they go wherever they're needed. Over here, we see some trucks, some badges, and I can't help but notice uh, this, what is this called? It's a measurement strip or? Yeah, it's a measurement uh, that you use for the kids before mm -hmm. they enter any, uh, for during our nutrition program. Mm -hmm. So uh, you put this uh, around their arms and uh, then you can measure based on the size if they need to be admitted or not mm -hmm. to a uh, therapeutic feeding center. As uh, so this seen. is the band that we actually yeah, saw. Yeah, exactly, that. it's oh. the band. Then you can measure here um, the, the color indicates if you need to admit the mm. child or not to the to the therapeutic feeding center. It's quite impressive also that when you arrive at the red colors, it oh. gives you the size of the arm. So we face such type of situation uh, in I the field. I couldn't tell exactly in the picture, but in the picture, um, the, bo the baby's arm, uh, obviously we, we saw the red, his, his arm is yeah, exactly. So if you do not act medically, the child is going to die. And some of them will unfortunately not recover from mm -hmm. their... Not always easy to cope for our aid workers to face such type of situation. Oh. And when people are admitted to the therapeutic feeding center, we are using what we call plumpy nut, mm -hmm. which is uh, ready-to-use therapeutic food uh, oh, okay. for children when they face severe acute malnutrition. Uh -huh. So it's ready to be to be used, and this will. Uh, I would say boost their uh, nutritional mm -hmm. uh, status quite quickly because this is the equivalent of 500 kilocalorie, oh. uh, this, this uh, plumpy nuts. So we are using a lot uh, in, in the field. Mm -hmm. Soon, um, MSF will be celebrating its 50th anniversary, very yes. soon. <laughs> so, um, how big when, uh, was it when it was first founded? Yeah, we, we started in the early 70s uh, with 13 uh, medical doctors who created MSF. Uh, most of them were facing uh, the civil war in Nigeria, in mm -hmm. Biafra where they already highlighted the problem of access to the population and they wanted also to witness what they, they were saying. So they decided to create an organization, a medical organization, and make sure that the population uh, deprived by medical care have a minimum access to, to health care mm -hmm. in the spirit of neutrality, impartiality and independence uh, without discrimination based on race, gender, political creed or religious mm -hmm. creed. That's what's really key in our MSF charter. Unfortunately, I would say that the history of MSF is linked with tragic events, mm -hmm. but also hope to be able to support, to show empathy and to show solidarity mm -hmm. with uh, population or people facing tragic events and to help them to recover and, and to lead their own life. 
and during this uh, 50 years or so, we, we, uh, I think we have increased uh, drastically our operation yeah. and, and we became, and we, it's a constant learning process, more mm -hmm. and more professional to optimize the resource and really to make a difference for, for the patients. And could you perhaps tell us about uh, the key activities of MSF? So the key activities, uh, we have mainly a response uh, to emergency. Uh -huh. uh, uh, that's, I would say, the key and core activities of mm. the organization because we have developed for the last uh, uh, 20 years, 30 years, uh, a lot of experience uh, to be able to go where other actors are not mm. present. I quite focus also on, on response to epidemics, uh, measles, cholera, the Ebola epidemics yes. in Western Africa where, where MSF was at least at the wedding, one of the main actors to, to try to face this major epidemic outbreaks and calling others, please join us because we will not be able to deal with the, uh, this, uh, this epidemic. And beside this, we have also two other pillars of MSF. The first one was, uh, is the access campaign, mm -hmm. which is a campaign which uh, the, the, the main objective is to make the drugs affordable for uh, mm. countries in difficult situation and vulnerable population. Yes. One of the main success uh, is the uh, decrease in terms of price for the HIV AIDS treatment. Mm -hmm. The first ARV treatment, antiretroviral treatment for a patient, the cost was approximately uh, $10,000 per patient per year. Wow. But due to, thanks to several efforts by the Access Campaign and other actors mm -hmm. also, we were able to decrease the price to uh, $60 per year per patient. So, of course, it, it, it makes this treatment uh, affordable for more population and mm -hmm. governments or so. And then we have a co another component uh, dealing with neglected disease. Neglected diseases are diseases that are not well known to the world, is that what the, They diseases? are well known, but uh, there is no uh, not sure. enough investment to ah, produce drugs or research and development to mm -hmm. be able to eradicate those diseases because it's affecting a limited number of population. Ah, they're not, not getting the attention they need. They don't have the attention they need because probably uh, we are a system mainly based on profit, mm -hmm, so which mm -hmm. means that you cannot make profits with a neglected disease if you speak about 1 million or 500 ah, people in a remote area and a, and a poor population. Mm -hmm. So we try to push and to, to shift from this profit approach mm -hmm. to uh, an approach driven by the needs of the patient. Ah, I see. There have been a growing number of refugees escaping their war-torn countries. MSF has been launching their boats to rescue those in distress at sea. After days of fear and suffering, they finally arrive on shore and can dream of a better tomorrow, thanks to the assistance provided by MSF. What other kinds of people are actually a part of MSF or, or work for MSF? Mm -hmm. So the core activities uh, are medical activities, mm -hmm. so which means that we have medical doctor, general practitioner, surgeon, anesthetist, gynecologist, nurse, midwife. Mm -hmm. But uh, you need to provide the support to run the operation. First right. of all, you need just to manage a huge number of teams. Mm -hmm. You need also specialists in logistics. And, and MSF, I think, makes a big difference compared to other organizations that we are quite reactive and we are able to deploy an emergency team within two days everywhere in the world. Ah. So to be able to, uh, to have a full cargo of material mm -hmm. uh, and, exp and uh, head workers ready to go everywhere in the world to quickly respond to an emergency. Mm. So uh, you have a variety of, of profile, uh, medical profile, administrative profile, financial and logisticians mm -hmm. are most 
obviously welcome to apply for us. <laughs> wow, you, <laughs> it's you a make teamwork. it. <laughs> <laughs> so members of MSF, um, well, probably, uh, as you said, uh, would have to be able to just pack up and be able to leave right away or, or whenever yes. possible. Are there any qualifications that are required to become an MSF member? I think the first uh, qualification is uh, to be committed to work in difficult situations mm. and to be ready to cope with those situations, yes. to have an interest also of what's happening abroad, it's uh -huh. quite important. But I have seen in the field young people, uh, 28, 30 years old, 26 years old, but mm -hmm. I had a chance also to, to work with people of over 70 years old. Oh, wow. So, you, but all of them were committed, professional in their task, mm -hmm. and, and uh, with this willingness to make a difference. And that's what should drive us, to make a difference for the patients. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned something about a 70-some-year-old, mm -hmm. um, who's also a member of MSF. Yes. Um, could you maybe... Do you remember or do you know perhaps the youngest member of MSF? Oh, the youngest. Uh, Would it be someone in his or her 20s, probably? Yeah, or at or least younger? people having two years of professional ah, experience. Right. So, But I, I remember, uh, I think it's 26 years old, uh, 27 years mm -hmm. old. Yes, it was a, a nurse, but uh, ah. I met several uh, people in the field and, mm -hmm. and uh, but it's true it's a, it's a wide range between uh, mid-twenties the youngest up to uh, 70 years old you, you need to be fit also to mm -hmm. go to the field because sometimes you you face difficult situation uh, mm -hmm. access to water it's sometimes a problem you are not living in a luxury environment in remote right. areas so you need to be physically able and mentally also mm -hmm. able and, and it's quite important because msf it's one of the few organizations having a direct contact mm -hmm. uh, with, with the patient. So uh, we do not subcontract our operation, which means that uh, it's our own doctors, our own staff being in contact with the patient directly with the population. Mm -hmm. Aid workers in conflict zones are in constant danger. Par demander aux gens de rentrer et puis euh, d'essayer de les placer euh, entre quatre murs, il n'y a pas grand chose à faire, quoi. Tu attends. Mais bon, pour l'instant, ça tire d'ici, il n'y a pas d'échange vraiment, quoi. C'est que après, il peut y avoir l'avion qui passe. Donc là, si tu as l'avion qui passe, ça peut être un peu plus violent. Quoi. Transporting of the wounded seems an endless task. We have uh, around 8 to 12 uh, operations a day. Most of these wounds are caused by the gunshot or bomb, and uh, they are dirty wounds. If they come late, the wound will get dirty, and then we have uh, difficulty. And of course, uh, because uh, they are, uh, the injury are caused by the bomb or the, the gunshot, so sometimes we see very bad fractures. I think the, the MSF alone work now. In this moment, the MSF, I just, it's alone. The members of MSF are of the first people who arrive in these, uh, I guess, most dangerous locations or mm. conflict, loan, conflict zones. Mm. Um, they seem to be fearless. Um, they're more than ready to jump in to help others. But of course, fear is within us. Yes. Um, <laughs> it, it, if you're a human being, of course, we all are fearful in certain situations. How do you overcome fear or these... Um, certain emotions or feelings, or especially fear. When we go in, in, in difficult or challenging area, yes. the, the zero risk does not exist, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, due to banditism, due to level of violence, etc. So uh, this is something you, you need to, prop to understand the risk you take before joining MSF. It's important also that uh, aid workers working in, in different fields focus on their work. Eh? Mm -hmm. The idea is not for them to survive, the idea is to help people to survive mm -hmm. and that's why we have also this wide range of professionals supporting the medical activities right. you need to facilitate the job of our head workers to be able to make this difference for, for the, the, the patients. When, when we, we start in a country, it's clear that when we begin operation in the country, we do proper assessment, we, we uh, make a risk analysis of the environment mm -hmm. and we put in place uh, different tools and, and procedures and policy to minimize the risk. Mm -hmm. So people are uh, to increase as much as we can the protection of our aid workers uh -huh. and the protection also of our staff 
so the, uh, the, the staff should be able to mainly focus on their work. It's easy to say, it's not always easy to, to implement, mm -hmm. but fear is also um, uh, a tool that, dri that may drive you uh, to, uh, I would say, uh, to uh, achieve your objective. Sometimes, and, uh, I sometimes, think, Sometimes, yes, yes, uh -huh. yes. So you should uh, make it as a kind of a positive stress to, uh -huh. to be able uh, to, uh, to, yes, to achieve your objective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A U.S. airstrike on an Afghan hospital has killed 19 people, including three children. The attack, which took place on Saturday, heavily damaged a Doctors Without Borders trauma center in war-torn Kunduz while doctors were treating dozens of patients there. Hospital officials... Now, the world was shocked by the uh, news of the horrific aerial bombing. Um, now, this occurred last October, I believe, in Afghanistan. It hit one... Um, uh, medical center, or shall we call it an MSF hospital? Mm -hmm. Could you maybe begin by telling us yeah. about that? Uh, the the world was shocked, but we were so deeply shocked mm -hmm. uh, by by the bombing in in Kunduz. We lost uh, thirty people uh, in this hospital, and and fourteen uh, MSF uh, staff were were uh, were killed. So we see uh, really a heavy trends that uh, more and more the medical facilities and humanitarian aid workers are targeted by uh, parties to the conflict. And then you leave 300,000 people without any medical facilities. Yes. So the, the situation is very easy, you are going to die. Right. And, and that's the consequences of such attack. And this is totally unacceptable uh, right. for us because in most of the region or countries where we are working for the patient we are the the last hope mm -hmm. uh, and we are working more and more in in dangerous settings so we mm -hmm. need to make sure that parties of the conflict respect uh, a safe even and an hospital should be and must be a safe even right now also the u.s forces i mean they acknowledged uh, that its airstrike hit the hospital and i understand they offered to pay for re uh, reconstruction costs yeah. but it was turned down yeah. <laughs> Could you tell us about that? Yes, it's a rule within the organization that we do not accept funds from uh, countries or donors being directly or indirectly involved mm. in, in a conflict area. In the case of, of Kunduz and Afghanistan, well, the U.S. force are a part of the, the, the conflict, mm -hmm. so we will never accept any funds from, uh, from donors being, or donors or institution or government being involved uh -huh. in, in a conflict area, directly or indirectly. And this is crucial for us because uh, we want to translate uh, our neutrality into something concrete in the field and something mm -hmm. independent. And this is key also for the acceptance of the population. We should not be perceived as a kind of ambassador mm. of any Western or other powers, but as a humanitarian organization driven by the need of the population. So uh, it's quite important that we translate this neutrality by uh, having a healthy distance with governments and institutional donors mm -hmm, also. Mm -hmm. Acceptance of the... We, we need to be accepted by, by, by the population. We help also. Right. And uh, we need to be perceived and we need to act as a real neutral organization. And we are acting as a neutral organization. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons we do not accept such type of funds. So do you plan to reopen or perhaps open another medical facility, a hospital in Kunduz? That's uh, an assessment we have to do today uh, because, first of all, we need to make sure that we have enough guarantee to protect our own medical staff. That's, mm -hmm. that's crucial. But also uh, to make sure that there are guarantees to protect patients will not be again targeted by another attack. Mm -hmm. So this is an, an investigation we do internally and we hope, yes, but uh, not at any price, uh -huh. as you can easily understand. No? Mm -hmm. so we don't want to face again a bombing with a high level of casualties in our mm -hmm. hospital. Oftan Yundo Chuga Janko, Tanjigan, he sang Jongshiman Kajigo, Rekaso, Taran Sengmyong, the Busag Salindan, the Chachega, Tomar Kogiago.
명예로운 직업이라고 생각하고 어, 의미 없는 죽음은 아니었기 때문에 정말 박수를 보내고 애도를 표하고 싶습니다. Uh, to contain the disease, otherwise we would have more and more deaths. Yeah. And it requires a lot of effort because it was a difficult operation. Uh, uh, first of all, because at the beginning we were um, the only organization uh, really on the front line mm. with this Ebola uh, outbreak. And uh, the needs were huge. So several times we call other actors, please join us uh, mm -hmm. because we will not be able to cope with the, the, the situation. You need to be humble also in such type of situation. Uh, we are not going to save the world. Uh, we do our best, but you need to remain humble and to say, okay, we cannot cope with this population, with this situation. We need more, more, uh, more support. And it was a challenge also because we, we you need to protect also your own staff because mm -hmm. this is a highly uh, uh, highly dangerous disease. So you need to make sure that you protect also your your medical staff. There is also a high level of preparation, guidelines, materials, and also training of our staff right. to uh, to be able to quickly respond to any emergency, mm -hmm. any type of, of emergency. The protection of your staff is yeah, of course also, priority. So yeah. oh, I see. We went to a movie theater in Seoul. It was for the screening of a special documentary film shedding light on MSF's efforts during the relatively recent outbreak of Ebola that had a high mortality rate of 60% and left the entire world in fear. <laughs> Affliction, a documentary about the fight against Ebola. We asked uh, other NGOs, we asked uh, uh, governments, civil authorities, we asked the military, but nobody came. And so we were put in the position where we had to turn patients away people who would go on to die in their communities, people who died at the gates. We felt alone. Bobby, R -O -B -I. Thank you. Have you read the guys? Okay, it go. provides a glimpse into MSF's activities in the African countries affected by the Ebola virus. Losing a colleague left them devastated. We have admitted in the CTE one of our colleagues, an infirmier. But on apprend maintenant que notre collègue est décédé de Ebola. Je me sens vraiment touché. On ne s'attendait pas vraiment à ça. We have some results for you. We have five negatives. But there were also days when they could hear the laughter of survivors. The film tells compelling stories of the impact of the Ebola epidemic and ensuing tragedies. After the screening, the MSF staff answered questions from the audience. MSF uh, treat uh, 35 persons of all the cases of Ebola in Western Africa. But uh, we would have been very pleased, I think, to see other organizations being more actively involved in the response to this epidemic. But it was unfortunately not the case. But that's the choice of MSF. It's to be there where the needs are the more acute and there we, where there is also less presence. A Korean aid worker who had been dispatched to an African country was also present. They shared with the audience their experiences and thoughts.
잊지 말아 주십시오. 분명히 에볼라가 곧 종식되기를 희망하고요. 또 종식되겠죠. 그러나 그러면 에볼라가 종식되면 우리 이제 시에라리온을 잊어도 되는 걸까요? 그렇지가 않습니다. 왜냐하면 너무나 가난한 나라고요. 우리가 흔히 알고 있는 홍역이라든지 이런 병들도 언제든지 다시 수많은 사람들의 목숨을 이 가난한 나라, 의료체계가 서 있지 않은 이런 나라에서 언제든지 생길 수 있기 때문에 이 나라들을 꼭 기억해 주십시오. The MSF workers, like everyone else, probably feared for their lives. But with the commitment to action, they put their own lives at risk and saved the lives of 2,500 people. Amongst these altruistic individuals are the proud faces of MSF Korea. When was the MSF Korea office launched? So it went launch uh, in 2012. 2012. So it's still a, a new office, I would say, within the MSF movement, uh -huh. uh, which comprise uh, approximately 25 uh, offices. But I must say we can be proud because it's a growing office uh, mm -hmm. in, in uh, the MSF movement. And also uh, uh, it allows us to have more and more visibility of our operation and to share the, the concerns we have uh, and, and the operation we are implementing in, in, in different countries to share this experience with the Korean public mm -hmm. and Korean stakeholders. Also. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us uh, maybe the uh, number of members that are registered with MSF Korea? So members, we have uh, a board and a general assembly mm -hmm. with uh, approximately 20 members, but the most important is the number of donors we have ah. and supporters also. Uh -huh. And it has increased. And uh, we have actually, uh, by uh, it was by end of 2015, approximately 27 thousand supporters that uh, mm -hmm. on a regular basis donate uh, to MSF and, oh, and uh, take this opportunity to thank them because mm -hmm. it's thanks to this support that uh, we are able also to run our activities and, uh -huh. and in an independent way. Uh, so right. it's, it's really a uh, key for us to be able to run. But beside uh, the, the regular donors, mm -hmm. we have also a significant number of people uh, following us on, on different uh, social network being available in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, something which is also key is that uh, by end of 2015, uh, we had uh, 21 uh, aid workers uh, uh, from Korea mm -hmm. uh, sent to the different uh, op as, uh, sent to the different countries where MSF uh, operates. It's very worrying to, to be part of a movement that's bigger than just myself, but that's actually helping um, people um, in some real difficult situations, whether it's war or a disease outbreak um, or a natural disasters, to be there to, to provide help when no one else is helping them. And to be a part of that is, is very rewarding. 후원을 많이 해주시고 오래 해주시는 분들께 전화를 드렸던 적이 있었는데요. 어떤 이유로 후원을 좀 이렇게 많이 하게 되셨어요 하고 여쭤봤는데도 계속 아유 그냥 저는 별거 아니고 너무 좋은 일 하시는 분들이니까 그냥 도움이 됐으면 좋겠습니다 하면서 굉장히 부끄러워하시는 분들이 많으시더라고요. 참 감사하고 정말 잘 쓰이도록 저희가 안내도 해드리고 그 후원자님들께 감사도 표시해야 되겠구나 하고 느꼈습니다. in international politics and business administration. Um, how did you come to work for MSF? Oh, I think it's a, it's a long story. Uh, in fact, when I was a teenager, a few years ago, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a chance to read a book uh, written by a French author about uh, doctors going in Afghanistan. And, and, and the title was, if I translate it directly from French, it's where others are not going mm. and I found it quite fantastic you know to have people uh, landing in Pakistan crossing the mountains going in Afghanistan for a few months 
just helping the population, providing care and coming back. It was quite interesting because I found uh, valuable the, the fact that they are helping others people, uh -huh. but also the adventure side also to discover new culture, new mm. people, new way of life, uh, and to see the world like it is, you know, not through a soap opera, but through real people. Mm -hmm. And uh, after my, my, my studies, uh, I decided to apply as a, as a volunteer, and that's how I start with, uh, with MSF. Now, were you appointed as general director of MSF Korea, or did you volunteer? No, no, there is a recruitment process, you I know. Uh, <laughs> I was hoping you would say, I volunteered. <laughs> no, no, I volunteered, but then I went through a recruitment process. Oh. Uh, it's a it's, uh, position like any position in this office, having a certain level of responsibility. So we mm -hmm. need to make sure that we have the best people in the best position. Yes. So uh, I'm not saying I'm the best person <laughs> in the, this position, but at least I was appointed as a, mm -hmm. as a GD for... A, in, in Korea, so I'm very happy. Yeah. Wonderful. So, I mean, all the I said congratulations <laughs> when we first met. Congratulations once again. Yeah. Now, quickly, I was curious, um, I wanted to ask you, uh, could you maybe share um, a moment that you remember or cherish till this very uh, day, mm -hmm. um, a very special moment? No, if I have to choose one, it's definitely my, my first mission. My uh, first mission. I was uh, 26 years old, it was past century, <laughs> uh, you know, a uh, lot of commitment, still naive, having mm. a different life experience. It's normal when you are 26 and, and then you, you have a different vision of the, your, your environment and it's normal, huh? it's mm -hmm. step by step. And, um, but it was a, a strong experience, unfortunately, it's, it's a sad one because mm. it was the, the, the genocide in Rwanda. Uh, uh, and, and we had really a uh, heavy project there for refugees and uh, it has been, uh, it's, yeah, of course it's a strong experience and you change your view of, mm -hmm. of the world after because uh, uh, my grandparents who went through the Second World War, you know, we have learned that never a genocide will happen again after the Second World War in Europe and uh, it was obviously not the case. Mm. Uh, genocide happened in, in the middle of Africa in, in the, without uh, any intervention and in a complete disinterest of the international community. Uh -huh. So that was uh, quite, quite shocking about how cynical can be the international relation when it's linked with uh, the survival aspect of some population. That was quite... Uh, uh, yeah, it, it was a, a strong feeling and also because unfortunately we lost a lot of our colleagues mm. there. Uh, all my colleagues, Rwandan colleagues, were killed during this genocide. So yeah, it has been a strong, uh, strong experience and which uh, in fact uh, had a positive impact uh, in the way it's perhaps resilience but uh, to work harder and to still be committed to mm -hmm. the humanitarian world and, and the, uh, the work we are doing because and where I'm satisfied in, 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 in the different mission I did is that uh, in each circumstances you still see hope with people and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, a little bit bringing hope and, and, and telling them there are possibilities for you to cope to, to with the situation. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, something very, very positive. It's a little bit egoistic, but it's mm -hmm. quite... Uh, quite positive and that's what push you to continue to work for, for an organization such yes. as MSF. Yeah. Um, now, I, we have come to our very last question. Um, wow, time has really flown by very quickly. <laughs> um, if there is a message that you would like to deliver or convey to our viewers that are watching from across the globe, um, to those that may be interested you know, after watching our interview, uh, uh, being interested in perhaps becoming a part of or joining uh, MSF, is there a word you want to um, yeah. perhaps share? Uh, first of all, I would like to wish them a healthy new year. Uh, that's mm -hmm. very important for them and their family. Also, um, the other message just, it's just in, 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 the world is facing a lot of, of challenge today and I think it's important to show empathy and also to be in a state of mind to build bridge instead of building walls. And that's probably uh, one of the main challenge we are going to face in the, in the coming years. And uh, for those who would like to join MSF, uh, I think go on our website and apply. There are a lot of vacant positions. We need, uh, uh, we need them. So we need people who are committed to work for us. 
And for those who unfortunately, for different reasons, cannot join us, they can follow us on our social website, or if they want, they can contribute to the MSF uh, movement by becoming supporters or donors. This will help us a lot. Okay, thank you so much for that message. And I would personally like to thank you for um, sharing such lovely stories with us and uh, for educating us, letting us know about what's happening around the world and uh, letting us know much about MSF. Thank you for your valuable time. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.